Hi everyone and welcome to our webinar. My name is Zina. I'm a digital marketing manager here at Absco and today's session will focus on how to improve your sales pipeline by 37% with a recruitment award. I'm pleased to be joined by Josie Holroyd, Head of Absco Member Services and Lisa Jones, Director of Barclay Jones. Hi ladies, how are you all today? Yeah, very great, yeah, thank huh? you. Uh, thank you, thank you for uh, for being here and for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, Josie will give you more information about the, the upcoming Apps Awards for Excellence and why you should be submitting your entries this year. I'm sure there are many of you in the audience who are, have either won an Apps Award for Excellence uh, or have submitted an entry in this year already or in the previous years. Josie will give you a short update on what to expect from this year's event. Uh, later on, Lisa will show you what you can do to capitalize on recruitment awards, whether a finalist, or a winner, or simply attending, and how to drive sales and leads. Actually, research shows that uh, winning an award can increase, uh, can increase sales by 37%, which is a lot, and simply becoming a finalist can increase sales by 17%. Now, I'm sure you are looking forward to hearing from our speakers today, so let's kick off. Jo Josie, do you want to start? Yeah, thanks a lot, Zina. Hi, everybody. Hope you're all well today. Glorious day outside. So thanks for spending the time with us over lunchtime period on the webinar. So basically, I'm sure you've all heard about the AppSco Awards. We've been um, doing the awards since 1999. And over the years, they've become more and more popular and more and more successful. As you're all AppSco members with us today, I know that you know that AppSco is committed uh, very much to promoting best practice and excellence in recruitment. And that's exactly what we try to do and do indeed do um, by the awards that we actually put forward for you to enter and subsequently to hopefully win. We differ a little bit to other awards within the industry in that we initially ask you to put in uh, an entry, a paper entry, but obviously now everything's done in soft copy over, over, over the line. Um, but what we do is most other awards just literally judge on that paper entry. But what makes us unique is that after the uh, entries are shortlisted by our independent judging panel and I must stress that there is no one from APSCO on the judging panel, they're all independent judges. The initial selection and shortlist is made just by looking at your entries but then you're shortlisted to come along to face-to-face -face interviews with your particular panel of judges and that's really important because well, I'm sure lots of you don't exaggerate on your entry forms, but there is a possibility that some exaggeration might be put forward. And what our judging panel there, the face-to-face -face interviews do, is actually obviously check on the information that you've put on there. And therefore, it makes it a really genuine and unique award to win. And I hope many of you will put forward your entries to us. Entries free, by the way, to APSCO members, which, again, is a, is a real bonus. So why should you enter? Well, as we've just mentioned, we said that APSCO is actually known um, to provide um, best practice and excellence within the recruitment industry. So you're going to receive real recognition and publicity for all that work that you've put in to your awards entry and then the subsequent face-to-face uh, -face interview. You're going to be able to celebrate your success with your employees and Believe you me, lots of you do when you've won them before. So out there on social media, in the trade press, wow, it's, it's actually amazing to actually win one of our awards or indeed to be shortlisted. Because what you receive from us is you'll receive a special logo that, that you'll be able to put at the bottom of your email address, on your head of paper, wherever you want to put it on your website to actually show that you have been shortlisted and indeed um, been a winner if you're successful in doing that. And they really are the most prestigious awards in the professional recruitment industry. So we're looking forward to getting your entries in uh, this year. There are lots of categories that you can actually enter. And we've put those on the next slide, Lisa. Um, so you've got all those actually listed. I'm not going to go through them all. They're there. They're on the website. And I hope that you've all seen lots of emails that have been coming out and details in the bulletin that comes out every week as well that's in a sends out to us all. 
so you can see all the entries. If any of you have any queries about those particular categories, then please do come back to me. On the website, you'll find the particular uh, and relevant application forms, entry forms, I guess is the right phrase to use, for each of those award categories. And you'll see that they are, there are different questions that are applicable for the category that you're actually entering. Again, if you have any questions on those particular items on the entry forms, then drop me an email or give me a call. I'd be happy to go through everything with you. Um, one thing I would say is that, uh, and a tip, and, and on the entry forms, in each box on those forms, you'll find there's a maximum word entry. And I have to stress to you that that really is a maximum. If you go over that word total, then you'll be immediately disqualified. So that's very, very serious. Uh, the judges will have a lot of entries to go through, and that's a key criteria that you must stick to. So final slide, Lisa, thank you. Um, the completed entries need to come to us at awards.absco.org by 5 p.m. on Thursday, the 6th of July. Those entries then will be sent to the judges to actually judge. Now, again, bear in mind that we have a panel of 12 to 15 judges, and not all of them look at every category. So they're specialist judges, and they'll be allocated the awards that are particularly relevant to their expertise within the industry. Those judges will look at your entries. They'll then discuss the entries in conference calls, meetings, whichever works for each particular group. And that's, as I said before, when you'll be shortlisted to actually go into face-to-face -face interviews, which will all be held at the NatWest offices. Those of you that are shortlisted will then be invited along to a wonderful lunch, which is uh, hosted by NatWest and sponsored by NatWest and Six Cats. And basically, that's a great lunch where you really are treated very, very specially as uh, to be a shortlist and then obviously to be a winner as well. So fingers crossed that many of you will be actually at that lunch and we'll see you there on the 18th of October. So today, that's, that's my bit, and again, just to reiterate that if you've got any questions when you're putting forward your entry, do get in touch with me, and I'll happily go through with you as much as I can. Obviously, I can't give you, I can't give you details of what you've got to put on your forms. That's something that you've got to do yourselves. Now, why we've asked Lisa to join us today is, well, what can I say? We've worked with Lisa for many years. She's one of the most professional people that uh, work with us within our industry. And she really has such a lot of knowledge, which will, you know, will help you actually put together your award. And as Zina highlighted, she's going to, you know, going to actually advise you on how entering a winning award, being shortlisted a winning award, can actually potentially raise your sales by 37%, which is absolutely fantastic. And I know Lisa's the best person to actually give you that information. So I'm going to hand over to Lisa. So welcome, Lisa. And, um, and really take notes, um, ask Lisa any questions during or after the webinar, and look forward to receiving your awards, everybody. Good luck and enjoy the webinar. Thanks, Josie. Fantastic. So I'm hoping you're all compelled to start, obviously, downloading application forms and cracking on. Um, so obviously one of the things that we do at Barclay Jones is we do a lot around marketing and recruitment and we mentor marketeers right from group heads of marketing of big global recruitment businesses right down to their lovely executives that work in their teams as well. So if you want any more information about that, let us know. We also train recruiters on how to use key systems to become super speedy and extremely profitable because gone are the days where we just used the back of our, you know, the back of a fag packet and our wit now is saturated with systems and processes. So we're really keen on that. And we obviously advise on recruitment technology as well. So everything we do is recruitment related. And today we're talking about recruitment awards. If you want some information about what to stop doing this year, we've spoken to some market leaders and we include AppsCo in that. There's a free ebook that we can send you. You can either download it with the link there or just put stop in your chat facility and we'll send you the link after this particular show. 
And also, if you actually want the pack, which goes into a lot more detail than we've got time for today, and it's a pretty of a fun pack as well, typical awards that are in your sectors, typical ideas for generating award-winning submissions, etc., and what to do on the night as well, apart from obviously squeezing into black dress and get drunk, then please download our awards um, ebook. And again, if you'd like that, either download it with the bit.ly in front of you, or just put the word awards into your chat facility, and they'll obviously send you the webinar. I'm hoping that you're all on Twitter today, so please put your Twitter, uh, Twitter name into your chat facility. But if you do, obviously keep an eye on Twitter. Feel free to tweet us at Barclay Jones and obviously at appsco underscore org. So today we're talking about how to improve your sales pipeline by 37%. And the reason this stat is so important and the reason that we're running this webinar is because I've been a judge on a number of recruitment awards over the years. And what 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 worked in my head last year was I was speaking to some of my clients who really should have entered and didn't. And when I asked them why, they gave me excuses. We all are time starved. I understand that totally. They gave me reasons. Well, it's all fixed, isn't it? And I'm like, well, no, actually. And if anybody has worked with me, they know that I'm really massively principled, almost overly principled. So I don't get involved with stuff that's going to make me look bad. But at the same time, from the awards I've been a judge on, it's bloody hard work being a judge. It takes off a significant amount of your day. Um, certainly when I've done awards before, I've been on a panel of 20 judges. It'd be hard for it to be fixed. And actually, the amount of submissions that we have to go through is significant. I think I estimated about 30 to 40 hours worth of my time last year just on judging awards, let alone the ceremonies themselves, which are obviously good fun. So awards are not fixed. Um, they are tough. They are necessary. And there's lots of reasons why you should enter an award. And ultimately, the money shot is actually the most important bit. So we're going to talk about that. Now, Zinner is very kindly going to generate a poll for me now, asking you if you're intending to enter an award this year. So Zinner, if you could generate that poll, let's give people 10 seconds to answer the questions, yes. and then we'll close the poll down. Lovely. Now, we don't need to show the results of the poll today, Zinner, so just feel free to close that down after 10 seconds, and then we'll move on. We're just interested in gathering some data today. We're not going to necessarily uh, be chasing people around the office with it. Fantastic. Is the poll now closed? Yes, yes, I've just closed the poll. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Now, also, another question that, um, that Zin is going to ask you is, do, do you actually have an award strategy? Because as a, as a digital marketeer and an IT geek within recruitment, I'm keen on strategy, not just tactics. So can you please um, answer the question there? Yeah, I've just launched it on the screen now. So if you don't mind taking a couple of seconds to vote. That's lovely. Okay, and I'm just about to close the poll now. Thank you, everyone. Beautiful. Okay. Now, obviously, what we want to do is we want to increase our sales pipeline. That's why you're here. That's what the heading talked about. Now, when I was hearing from my clients the excuses for not actually entering an award, I had one client who entered one award two years ago and decided because he didn't win that it was pointless. I thought that was quite interesting, and I wonder if Mo Farrow would subscribe to that um, particular um, option as well. So what we're going to do, do is today, we're going to talk about the return on investment, because all of my clients are constantly jabbing me in the shoulder saying, what's return on investment? What's the ROI? I'm going to give you some tips for generating ROI, and then I'm going to give you some hacks for generating some winning entries as well. There's a lot more in the document um, that you can download that will give you more information on that. So... Tell me in your chat facility, in the little box that you can type into, what do you think you'll gain from winning an award? Can you give me an idea on that? What kinds of things do you think, if you win an award, what kinds of things do you think are going to happen to you personally, maybe to your department, or maybe to your business? Yeah, really. Now, Zina, is anything coming through? Can you start reading them out for me? Yeah, we're just waiting for for everyone's uh, reply. So, so Lisa's asking us, what do you think you'll gain from a winning award? So, please feel free to to, to answer this in in our chat box. Don't be shy. So typically, we obviously want to get more brand, and certainly when I work with marketeers, brand is very important. But if I'm honest, I don't really get out of bed for brand because brand doesn't make money. Obviously, recruiters make money. Marketing supports that process. Let's move on, Zina, if we've not had anything through, because obviously everybody's obviously asking for Lisa to dance like a monkey, so I will dance like a monkey. Huh. Right then, let's move on. Now, typical ROI or return on investment or lack of return on investment, this is what I see when I go into marketing departments and 
and start working with them. That traditional ROI is they've blown some money, but that's not return on investment. They've wasted loads of time because trust me, if you're going to submit an award, it does take a little bit of time. But trust me, it's absolutely worth it on a variety of levels. I won an award a few years back. And if I'm really, really honest, I was more focused on getting into a dress that I'd bought than what I thought was going to happen afterwards. And if I'm honest, it's because, probably because I thought I didn't have a cat in hell's chance of winning. Blow me is all I'll say. So have a think about that. But I do have a lot of, a lot of people that I speak to and they're very fixated on the ceremony itself. Great, you're going to have a good night out, but trust me, there's work to be done afterwards. Obviously as well, uh, this is obviously being ironic, you're going to just increase your busy workload, trust me, you've already got a day job. Becoming an awards geek is clearly going to be, um, well, it's going to take time out of your day, isn't it? So let's also think about, we don't want to create any more stress, and trust me, it will, because the last thing you want to do is tell everyone you're going for your driving test, and then they ask you if you, you passed it when you got back and you didn't, that's not ideal. And obviously the demoralization piece is pretty, pretty um, instrumental as well. So for me, ROI is not just about money, although it is when it comes to awards, and we'll talk about that in a second. I'm interested in how much time a marketing department can generate for their recruiters by winning an award. If you win an award and then a client has the choice between an award-winning recruitment business and one who hasn't won any awards, it will help. When we go and buy wine, I don't know if any of you buy wine, I buy lots of wine, if I see a gold medal on it, I'm swayed. Yeah. If I go to TripAdvisor and I can see somebody higher up in the rankings than others, and lots of people have given very credible judgments to that restaurant, I am swayed. If I go and look at a car and Top Gear, rest in peace, has given it a slating, I am swayed by that. So time is really critical. The emotional state of the business, God help us, every recruitment leader I speak to, they're emotional creatures. They want an easy life, she says. They want decent cars, and they're emotionally affected by the way that their business trades. You win an award, you're emotionally affected. Clearly, as well, we want to improve the content of our business. We want something interesting to talk about, not just what tie to wear to an interview. And trust me, if you can talk about the awards that you've won, and you can have a landing page for all of that stuff, bring it on. But also, we want to improve the content of our databases. So don't we want to be luring candidates, clients, and recruiters onto our Bullhorn, Bond Adapt, Trisis, Itris, etc. systems with people that want to be part of our community? Great content. We clearly want to improve clicks to our website, the community we've talked about, and ultimately cash. So you've got to ask yourself, how, how can you generate ROI from awards? And if the only thing you're focused on is money, you're losing a whole raft of other stuff, which will make you money eventually as well. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about improving staff morale, obviously. I know when I came back into my business with an IT Department of the Year Award when I was an IT director, everything changed for me, for my team, and for the business. They could talk about having best-in-class systems and processes. They could talk about the fact that my team beat two world-leading banks in terms of how they developed their IT strategy. And obviously, the staff did as they were told from a systems perspective, which was helpful. This is really important. And what I liked about what Josie said earlier is that you are being interviewed. Um, and that is unusual um, in the awards calendar. I'm not saying that by not doing it, that puts other people at fault. But I really like the depth at which as APSCO ask you to justify your uh, submission. So what I would suggest you do is you think about an award as an opportunity to really reflect on your business and study it. So if you are going for marketing department of the year, and one of my clients won that with Recruiter a few weeks ago, so I'm obviously flipping delighted for them, it was an opportunity for them to really study how they supported the sales process, how they created communities, and what their content-driven strategy was all about. And it got them to really pick holes in it and improve it. Now, Appsco, you might want to put yourself on mute for a second because there's a little bit of background noise. There's a mute button in your top right-hand corner. Just a suggestion. Yeah, OK, thank you. Now, investing it. Investing in copy is absolutely critical because often as a judge, and I'm giving you some tips for the real world of what I've seen, as a judge, I often see bad copy. Web copy lifted and slotted in, not good. Copy that's potentially overly marketed and you wouldn't read out in an interview. Stuff that's clearly not been invested in because it's been a bit of a rush job and I do empathize with why, but it's just not good enough. And as a judge, we see right through it. Equally, what I see right through is a lack of passion because we've overly branded and marketed and PR'd our content that it looks like it's just we're writing a report about ourselves and we're dumbing ourselves down. 
By you demonstrating your passion, obviously that feeds into the business as well. And investing in copy, by the way, let's not forget, you invest in really high grade copy. You can use that across different platforms within your business. Clearly you want to market your business, don't forget that, but this is the key, attracting clients and candidates. And by the way, APSCO and Deloitte's fantastic report last year um, talked about the fact that the majority of recruitment leaders out there are pretty stressed about attracting their own staff. We run a workshop specifically on that. So if you want to know about, more about staff attraction, please type in staff into your chat box and Zinor will let us know who we need to touch base with. But just think about how awards can attract recruiters in. Because again, if I'm a recruiter looking for a move, I want to work for an award-winning company, one that's going to really invest in me and gives a damn about themselves. Now, so we've talked about the fact that 60% of recruiters say that lack of quality candidates is a problem, and 61% of recruitment leaders are stressing about headcount. Both of those problems can be helped and supported by winning an award, because basically what we're saying is we want to become talent magnets, and we want to become recruiter magnets. So let's stop pretending that our children, we are, you know, we are cobblers, and our shoes therefore can be messy because we're far too busy servicing our clients. And let's think about what awards can really do for us. Let's talk about the money. I've done some research on this because I'm, I'm very good at handling objections. So when people say to me, oh, what's the point? It's all a fix. Or what's the point? I get nothing from it. Do you know what? When you win an award, according to the data out there, you can improve your sales by 37 to 77%. Now, trust me, if you turn up to the APSCO Awards and Josie hands the award to you, your pipeline's not going to increase overnight. Josie, that would be a fantastic um, APSCO award. Uh, membership perk but that doesn't happen but obviously what you do need to do is market the hell out of these awards i'm going to give you some really good tips on this but for people who've won awards across the board across the industry they've improved their stats significantly if they've worked that award you can also improve your stock price so if you're one of the lucky recruiters out there that's actually on the market or has shares that's important obviously as well bracket aside we can influence our buyers by 80 percent we can basically say to them look and if actually, if you know anything about the buyer's journey, you know it comes in three parts. You need to make people aware of who you are. You then need to help them consider you as a viable option. And then you need to help them with the decision. Now, the key for this is ultimately that also from a recruiter's perspective, if you add on an extra layer, and this is my extra layer, I call it place and replace. So awards content can help make people aware of you because you're award winning. It can put you in the line of consideration. Yes, you're worth looking at because you clearly take yourself seriously. God help you if it doesn't make people make a decision about you because cho choice between you and A and other, but you've won an award and you seem to be the same on paper everywhere else, but you've won an award from a prestigious body like APSCO, you can influence. But let's not forget, candidates and clients can change their minds. So don't you want them coming to you because you are top of your tree and wanting to work with you and literally addicted to you so they dare not, you know, 4% of candidates blob on day one because they realize they've made a mistake. You're award winning, they're less likely to do that. So just think about that. Now also you can outperform the losers. And what I mean by this, and the stats ranging from 17 to 70%, so I didn't want to put those in. But the idea is, is if you are a winner and there's other people on your table that didn't win, then obviously you will also just outperform those. And the British Quality Foundation, two people called Hendrik and Signal, uh, came up with this data a few years ago. So quite compelling read. Type that into Google if you want to find out more. So if you're convinced, and I hope you are from the data, that's, you know, yes, we've gone through brand, we've gone through morale, we've gone through saving time because we can have more quality conversations with our clients. And if that hasn't persuaded you, then that data should have. Let's move on to actually how to win the flipping thing, because we want to, surely. But I must stress, even if you don't win, there is money to be made from being a finalist. I say to all of my clients, if you've become a finalist, don't wait to market your award status until after the event. As soon as AppsCo come out with the fact that you're a finalist, get online and start talking about it. Get your signatures updated. So in other words, Things to do before you even know that you've won, whether you win or not, are just as critical. And there is an argument to say, if you're really clever at this, ladies and gentlemen, you don't even have to win the award in order to generate ROI from it. Now, I know I'm going to come up with some fairly obvious stuff. And sometimes these webinars are an excuse for you to work on your business, not in it. So this might be an obvious statement to make. But do you know what? I've got clients who win awards who haven't told a soul apart from their bosses. What a waste of time. 
So have a think about a plan to tell your company, clients, candidates, and God help you, if you've got investors, can you remind them of why they've invested in your business in the first place? Think about really tactical devices. Get your marketeers to write a list of wherever you've mentioned online and literally shoot those things down. It's a bit like Tin Can Alley. Where are you talking about yourself that you need to adjust? Think about your social media banners, your, all your digital marketing banners, like your mail shop banners. Think about your email signatures. Think about just general call cards or quote cards that I say people should be creating that they can then flash across all of their social media streams. We've talked about adjusting your mailers, but don't just, again, don't just put a banner in and hope to God people read it. Actually talk about the fact that you're delighted and what's to stop you from actually sending a mailer out to your opt-in list saying, please wish us luck because we're absolutely delighted to, to be basically part of this industry and we've become a finalist. If you don't generate click-throughs, better conversations, more recruiter attraction from just being a finalist and you're doing something wrong. Again, engage with your business. Get a quote from your leader. Get their face up on the blog with a quote coming out of it saying, I'm flipping delighted to be part of this. Now, I'm going to set Anne up here, <laughs> or maybe I'm going to set Zinner up. But why aren't you, if you become a finalist, getting a quote from AppsCo as to why it's important that people enter these awards and using that on your marketing literature? It doesn't always have to be about you. It can be about the industry as such. So, Zinna, sorry to land you in this, but if any of the people listening become a finalist, I'm sure you'd happily give them a quote as to why the AppsCo awards are so important. And Josie as well. She gave such a passionate dictate as to why you should be coming online and doing this. Exactly. Yeah, of course. Thank you. So think about creating content. Now, do we need a video production company? Do we need liposuction? And Well, actually, yes, I'm probably going to say I probably do. Do I need a bit of airbrushing? Of course I do. Or do I just need soft lighting? But do I need, if I became a finalist, I'd get my phone out, I'd stick it in front of me, and I'd say, do you know what? I'm absolutely delighted with this because I've worked really hard to build my business up, and I'm really passionate about my business, and my values are authenticity, etc. So the fact that I'm, you know, I'm now on, on stage with a load of other finalists, seriously, that's a big deal for me. 30 seconds of my time. If I can't do that, I don't deserve to actually sit in front of clients and try and help them improve their businesses. So create some content, create an image, create, I don't know, just create something that you can then use again and again and give it to your teams to market. And then God help us if we don't plan the night. Assume you're going to have a hangover and assume the next morning you're not going to be able to tweet like lunatics, but plan the night. Be extremely strategic. This is a battle that you're going into. And yes, the decision of whether or not you've won or not might be a week old. You won't know until the evening, but get as much return on investment from that pretty little black dress or black tux. Get as much return on investment from the tickets you'll invariably need to buy to be there. Get as much return on investment from your time. And even if you don't win the award, plan to get money from your status as a finalist. So this is where things can sometimes go a little bit wrong. And I guess the majority of people on here don't go to an order and say, no, I'm not going to have any of this free champagne. No, I'm not going to buy an extra bottle of Prosecco. No, I'm not going to, de uh, what's the word, tank a load of uh, Jägermeister at one o'clock in the morning. I'm not going to do any of that because I'm there to generate ROI. I'm not stupid. I've been in recruitment 20 years. I know what you're there to do. You're there to have some fun, and rightly so, because you've worked hard to get there. But let's just think about a couple of things. Now, I'm saying try and stay relatively sober. I tend to say this to the marketeers, I'm sorry, my mentees, and say, look, or at least load up your Twitter before you get there. Everyone else can get completely smashed. That's when the pictures don't need to be taken. Beer goggles do not make for good ROI. Please make sure you're using pictures on Instagram and Twitter. Think about a video of winning the award. So this is the mistake I made when I won uh, the award many moons ago. I'm stood there and Jack D is comparing. Fabulous. We're up one of the tables, which is relatively near the front, but I wasn't taking it seriously. There are big searchlights outside. They've got celebrity lookalikes. I was totally geeked out. We bought an entire table. By the way, do that because it's fantastic for team building. We bought an entire table. I'd squeezed into my pretty black dress. I was delighted at the top of my, at the top of my game without a hope in hell of winning. So what do I do? I get my digital camera out, and I'm videoing Jack D, say, and the winner is. And then he reads out my company name. And this is what then happened. I dropped my digital camera on the table. It was in front of loads of empty bottles of champagne, because it was 11 o'clock at night by then, so we'd been drinking for a long time. Empty bottles of champagne, half empty glasses. But what was the cutest thing was actually, and you can tell the smile on my face, it videoed us screaming like 
like banshees and we could see our reflections going mental in all of the cut crystal as we ran up onto the stage but if i'm honest i'd have preferred something a little bit more aimed at us getting the award than us screaming and shouting and everything cut glass so that might be something for you to think about please just pr be prepared to win and what's the worst that can happen for five minutes you'll feel a bit sad and then you'll neck, neck another glass of wine again Again, video quote from the organiser of the award. So why aren't you going up to Anne or the person who's given you that award afterwards? And again, apologies in advance, Zina, and saying, um, can you please tell us about the awards? Tell us what they mean to the industry on the night. Get the sound in the background. They don't have to be manic massively manicured. Remember, you don't need a TV production company to create a 20 second soundbite. You want people to see your passion. And get a feelings list from the team. Right, John, how is this making you feel? And don't forget, you could actually do that before you go to the, uh, the ceremony as well, because if they say to you how they feel, there's a lot of psychological evidence to say they'll feel it. It's called uh, it's cognitive therapy. So have a think about getting from the organization how they feel about either being a finalist or being there in the evening. Milk those, those feelings for everything you can. And then obviously engage with the organizers online, because at the APSCO Awards, for example, no doubt Zinn is going to be dead sober. And and um, she's going to be tweeting like an idiot and marketing the event. I am absolutely sure she will be. Either that or she's going to be necking Jägermeisters from 6 o'clock. Who the hell knows? But engage with her. Engage with the marketing team. Because obviously they're going to be marketing to your competitors, your clients, and your candidates as well. And you have to jump on the back of that. So six tips to kind of get you started with what to do on the night. And of course, in brackets, have some flipping fun. You've worked really hard. And then we wake up the next morning and we have a list of things to do. And invariably, I've yet to go to a recruitment event where people weren't literally crawling in the door at six o'clock in the morning. And I'm talking in as in they've not been to bed. So please have a plan for measuring return on investment. We'll talk about that in a second. Talk to your clients, your staff and your market. Ask them, how do you feel about this? Get every recruiter to ring their top 10 clients the day after. So plan this into your diaries, folks. Top 10 clients, I just want to let you know, I'm flipping delighted, John. I know you knew we were going for the award because we told you. I just want to tell you we've won. And John will be absolutely ecstatic for you, and who knows what will happen from that conversation. And if every recruiter rang 10 clients the day after winning the award, trust me, massive, massive return on investment from that. Same with maybe your top contractors, your top permanent clients, and obviously survey your market. Why aren't the marketing department sending out um, a survey monkey asking people, now that we've won the award, how does that make you feel? Create more content as well, please. Think about more content that you can create. And please make sure that you adjust all your online channel branding. Do it immediately. Have things ready. Think about your email signatures. And God help you, adjust your job adverts. Let's start talking differently. If you know us, you know we're massively into job adverts. And again, type in the word job into chat and Zina will send you some information on our job adverts course. It's market leading. But just think about how you can demonstrate why they should be applying to you and not all the other recruiters out there that may have the same jobs. And dare I say, do something very similar to what we're doing right now. And if you don't know what a podcast is, it's basically a sound cast and it's not live. So the idea is it could even be that you download podcasts right now. Maybe you listen to uh, Kermode and Mayo on a Friday and then you hear the podcast on a Saturday. I do them every month as part of my recruitment leaders podcast. And the idea is I just interview someone for 10 or 15 minutes via sound and then I upload it later. There's nothing stopping you from maybe getting someone from AppsCo to talk about the fact that the, the awards have happened, what happened on the night, and then getting someone from your team talking about why it's been such a special thing for you, again, whether you're a winner or not. So they're just some things for you to capitalize on your win. And that's just the beginning. There's more in the pack that I alluded to earlier on in this session. Now, I also want you to think about what to measure because the ROI piece is massive. And as we know, when Josie hands that award to you on the evening, you're not just going to, your pipeline's not going to change overnight and your FD literally just melt with glee. It doesn't work like that. So we do need to think about how we're going to do this. Now, can you tell me how you currently measure ROI from your marketing and or just awards and again we won't necessarily read all of that out today i might compile some of this anonymously and maybe create some content from it so if you can just start typing and i'll continue with the webinar okay so here's some ideas on what to measure obviously if you're a marketeer clicks and followers are key so um yes i'm interested in during the duration of the awards campaign maybe you've generated more clicks than normal but that's not scientific enough for me i'm interested in the content that you created that was around awards 
the links that you put into your mailers that you can see the click-throughs on because I'm hoping as marketers you're using things like Pure360 or MailChimp etc and you can see what people are clicking on but we need a dashboard of how many people are clicking on awards related content and trust me if you don't have awards related content you can't measure the clicks to it so get cracking. Obviously as well, if you're sending out awards related content and you're also having calls to action about follow us because we're award winning, then you should be able to measure the extra followers you're getting as well. Think please about your meet the team pages. If you are um, ghosting a blog as a marketeer on behalf of Andrew, who's the head of marketing for your business, and the link is back to his meet the team page, how many more clicks is he getting as a result of that? If you're also, and God forbid you're not doing this, you've got to do this, if you're also putting those blogs on LinkedIn Publisher as well, because it's a much bigger community than you can possibly wish for, then again, how many clicks is he getting to his profile as a result of actively marketing that content through LinkedIn Publisher? I'm hoping that you have an awards page. I'm hoping that the awards that you're a finalist of and an aw a winner of are listed somewhere with link backs to those awards bodies. Great for SEO, by the way, and just fantastic generally. Think about the clicks to those pages and related blogs. Think about setting up a bit.ly. If you've not come across it, just type it into Google. It'll tell you all about it. You can create bit.ly's, which are shortened URLs, which allow you to measure where in the world people are clicking on stuff. A little bit more granular than Google. If you're really into the data like me and my lovely Rhiannon Marketeer is, then obviously Bitly is fantastic for that. And also think about just general subscriptions. Every marketeer out there should have goals for inc increasing database subscriptions, mailer subscriptions, digital subscriptions, and social subscriptions. And if you don't have those targets, you need them. And if you want to know how to get them, give us a call. But just think about how you're going to start measuring your community growth through this stuff. Then we get on to potentially what you might think is quite fluffy, but the reason I think happiness is key is because every single recruitment leader who rings me and says, Lisa, I've mucked up this CRM project, I'm spending too much money, my staff don't believe in me anymore, or Lisa, my staff are not using Bullhorn or they're not using LinkedIn properly, it's causing us some massive challenges. This is all related to emotional state, needs fixing every time. So think about also measuring the happiness of your clients. You can ask them questions like, how much more likely are you to work with a business that's award-winning or not? Those sorts of questions, ask them that. Ask them questions about, give them, ask them to tell you how they feel about you winning or becoming a finalist and get those words written down and market them internally and externally. Do exactly the same with your candidates and don't forget your staff and definitely don't forget your boss. Now what I did when I won this IT award back in 1432 was I actually didn't tell anybody that I'd entered because the business had never gone for an award in its life but I genuinely believed there was something and obviously I got the mailer through and I just thought you know what for the sake of x pounds and my time I'm going to give it a go and I filled out the forms and I did it all and then I got the email saying through we're a finalist I thought oh bugger I probably need to tell somebody now and at that point the business took ownership of the fact that we'd gone for the award which was great news and they all turned up for the event as well which was flipping nerve-wracking but it paid off massively obviously we want to generate leads and cash and you need to really think about how you're going to measure that because we know it's not going to happen overnight but the marketers in your business should be able to advise you on where leads are coming from and what kind of click-throughs have generated money and if they can't tell you that you need to get them to call us now, winning an award takes time, it takes passion, but it also takes really understanding how to play the game. Now, I can't speak for Appsco because I'm not a judge on their panels, but I am a judge on some other recruiting awards, and I've worked with lots of judges that have been on the Appsco panel. So I'm just going to give you a couple of tips today, but there are more hacks in the awards pack that we mentioned earlier in this webinar. So the goal is not to win. I know that sounds a bit crazy. The goal is to make money. The strategy is not to win. The strategy is to market your business. The tactic is to win. So in other words, see it for what it is and work it hard. The goal is not to submit your entry. Again, that is a tactic. So how are you going to develop that tactic? Well, Josie's already given you some really key tips. And trust me, this is a bit like me saying to my, my nine-year-old, can you read the question? that's asking you because the answer is often in the question. Follow the brief. As a judge, I am gobsmacked when I look at awards um, submissions and the brief has not been followed. Trust me, you don't follow the brief, it'll be thrown out. End of. We have too many submissions to go through. 
But do you know what the great thing about the brief is? It's normally very simple. So follow it makes your life a lot easier. What I've sometimes found as a judge, and what I've noticed is that many marketeers out there not only don't follow the brief, they do too much. And then they tell me they don't have time to do other stuff. So think about that. If you don't get passionate about your business, your candidates won't, your clients won't, and the judges will not. I've seen teams of people going through award submission after award submission, your eyes glaze over, and then when they get to one where the person who's read it has really injected some life and some passion and some joy into their business, it feeds back. Think about that, please, marketeers and, and recruitment leaders. This is interesting. The diversity piece for me was quite an interesting one last year when I was looking through award submissions and I found that there was a lot of questions around diversity and I'm being a bit flippant. We have a woman in the business, but trust me, I'm saying this because that's what I saw. Um, it's not enough to say that. I need more data. I need more. If you've only got one woman, what are you doing to get more women in? Because it is hard to get women in at a certain level. And obviously the lovely apps have a women in recruitment a body that focuses predominantly on that. And I'm doing a podcast next month on that very thing with AppsCo. But I really want you to think about diversity. And I really remember one particular submission last year on another award body that asked about diversity. And they'd gone into fantastic detail and it stopped all of the judges in their tracks. It really stood out because they were talking about homosexuality, they were talking about um, women, they were talking about disability, they were giving stats, they admitted the stats weren't brilliant, but they, they showed what they were doing about it. And they really looked like they gave a damn about that question. So just have, please have a think about that. When I say data, facts and stats, um, I often see submissions where they've not, it's all been a bit markety, a bit brandy and not enough information. Or maybe they put lots of data in but not enough information, or rather, it's, it's, uh, they're not getting to the point. They're not stating facts. They're not giving me stats about their business. Sometimes they've actually not specifically said, how much do you turn over? And the question has been blank, <sighs> off the chart straight away. So just think about the data that you can get from your business. And this is why when you go for an award, it's a great opportunity to study your business people, because ultimately what you're doing is you're saying, do you know, if I don't have this data, if I don't know where my placement sources are coming from, if I don't know um, the typical happiness score of my candidate, then what does that say about me as a business? I'm going to fix that, and that's going to allow me to go for this award. These things can be turned around really, really quickly. And the other thing I want you to think about is not showing your dirty washing. Now, what I'm going to allude to here is, one particular submission I saw last year, which again, if it sticks out a year on, really had an impact on me. So what do you do, team, to market your jobs? And what do you do to fill your jobs? Give me some innovative ideas, the question said. And one of the answers was, we use 15 job boards. And I looked at that and I thought, you wouldn't even be forgiven for saying that in the early 2000s. Why are you saying that in your award submission? Why are you admitting that you're only doing what every other recruiter out there does? Why are you admitting that you're only doing what your clients can do? And why are you admitting that your internal CRM, which costs you a fortune, which you've never put at the top of your list of things to use, why are you admitting that that's useless? Why are you admitting that you don't have a USP? So I'm a fan of submit stuff that if it got out into the public domain makes you look great. Submit stuff that you would be happy to talk to your clients about. Don't submit stuff that the average recruiter would go, yeah, whatever, we do that too. And certainly don't submit stuff that the judges who've poured through 20 to 50 submissions would go, that ain't innovation. That's, that's you looking to be dead in five years. And of course, the last thing that any awarding body wants to do is to give an award to an organization that is not a sustainable organization. So just have a think about that from a hacks perspective. And we've got loads of tips on how to win an award, write an award winning entry in the toolkit that we mentioned earlier. So just have a think about that. And it might feel like common sense, but trust me, lots of intelligent people filled out the forms that I read last year and they still got it wrong. So just spend some time on this. I think if all of you spent more time, it'd be awesome. So we've talked about what the ROI is. I hope we've convinced you that, yes, sales is key, but actually what often leads to sales are great phone calls, happy recruiters, more time to make those phone calls, a deeper and more effective community on your internal CRM because you've attracted them. So think about that. Think about how you can generate return and investment. And I'm not just talking about generating a great bar bill. I'm talking about leading up to the event, even before you've got that, your hand on the winning entry, 
talk about what you can be doing to flip and convert clients even before you squeeze into that black dress. And ultimately think, please, about the time you need to spend on generating those award-winning entries. And think about, please, the data and the content you create, you can use again and again. By the way, quick tip, don't use it again and again in every single award that you go for, because often us judges are on several different awards bodies and we'll spot them a mile off. So just be clever with that, please. Don't cheat with your homework. So can you please pop into your chat facility and give Zinna some feedback on what your takeaway is? What kinds of things do you think you're going to do differently? What, what, what's going to be your action plan for today? You don't necessarily need to list it all right now, but can you give maybe the highlights of this webinar? What's been your return on investment from the time that you spent on the webinar today? Lisa, thank you so much. That was amazing. Uh, we already started getting loads of information in the chat. Love the comments. Really, do you want to, and then do you want to read, you you want to read some of that out? Uh, yes, there was someone saying, uh, love the comment about passion and energy in the narrative of your copy. He's definitely going to use that. Uh, someone saying more promotional denied regardless uh, of winning or losing, which is very good. Better understanding of awards, process, and benefits of entering. More promotion when shortlisted. All good stuff. Never underestimate what this Applications, can be. loads, loads of comments. Beautiful. And if you can send those to me afterwards, that'd be lovely because I'd like to make maybe, or maybe Zina, we could just create some content on that alone. That'd be really cool. Of course, yeah. So, if you need any more information about Barclay Jones, please come to our website, nice and easy, barclayjones.com. Don't abbreviate it. You will go to a completely different website with a whole different content plan. That's all I'll say. We work on two main things. We want to make recruiters more successful with their technology and their training, and we obviously want to help marketeers be more successful. So if you want any more information on either of those two things or both, put those words into your chat box, and Zina will forward you the information related to that. Don't forget our stop booklet, totally free of charge, some really good nuggets of information in there, got from all of the industry leaders, including the lovely Anne. You can get that straight away just by typing in bit.ly and then what to stop, so bear that in mind. And the same with the awards. Now, there's a lot more than what we've had time to go into today, um, and it's in a nice format as well just to give you some ideas on, on content planning. Right, thank you very much, everybody. Back to Zinna. Lisa, thank you. Thank you uh, again for, uh, for today's webinar. You're absolutely amazing, but that's no news to, uh, to anyone, I think. Uh, so thank you for your time. Um, thank you all for attending. I do hope you found uh, the session useful and that uh, both Lisa and Josie have answered all of your questions in regard to entering in the uh, recruitment awards and that you will be submitting your entries for the upcoming Apps Awards for Excellence. Don't forget that the deadline for that is Thursday, uh, 6th of July. So you still have a good two, three weeks to work on, on to use um, uh, the e-books and today's webinar to work on your uh, submissions. Uh, also, I wanted to let you know that I'm pleased to announce that the next APSCO webinar will take place on, on 21st of June and it will be focused on apprenticeships in recruitment. So if you are interested in attending, please look out in your inbox for an invite uh, today. I also wanted to let you know that the webinar has been recorded, so we will be sending you all of the goodies from Lisa, the ebooks and the slides and the recording in case you want to share this with someone in your company. Please feel free to do so. So thank you all, and until next time, have have a good day. Bye, everyone. Take care.